In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the focusing aids that Magic Lantern provides. There are quite a few different tools that will help you to focus your uh, manual focus lenses. Here I've got a, uh, an old 50 millimeter, sorry, 55 millimeter f1.7 MC Rocker PF. This will apply to all the other Canon EOS cameras that you can install Magic Lantern on. Let's go. I've got this other camera here with a macro lens so we can have a good close look at the screen so you can see what's going on. One that I like for doing photos is the uh, is the live view uh, zoom tweaks. So you go into the Magic Lantern and then find the, the spanner one and select that one. And I, I do a zoom on half shutter. And that way you can quite easily you make sure that your focus point is in the middle And now, what I can do is I can just do a half shutter and I'll zoom right in. And then I can either quickly start recording if I'm doing a movie or I can quickly take a photo. Now, that's, all, that's if your, your subject is in the center of the frame. Of course, you can, you can adjust your focus point a bit if you want to. And then focus accordingly and quickly take a photo. If I'm setting up a static uh, a video where this is on a tripod and it's going to be sitting for a long time, this is generally the method I'll use. Now I'll just turn that off. Now your other option is, we'll, we'll go to the magic lantern overlays here. Now your other option is the focus peaking here. Um, but it's got quite a few settings, strong edges, low edge, low res, threshold, color. And basically, I don't know if you can see that. There you go, see that red? appearing on there. It's not fantastic, but it is, you know, pretty useful, I find. It's um, nowhere near as good as what uh, the modern cameras do, but it does make it a, a lot easier, and you can adjust that while you're filming. Some situations it'll show up a bit more. Now it's worth saying that this sort of scene that you've got in front of you, even if you've got an autofocus lens, if you want to try and focus on a, a particular flower in that scene, um, you've actually got Buckley's chance of, of trying to focus on something like that. Well, oh, there's a bird in there. Now another thing that will work, if we turn on our movie crop mode, which makes this into rather a good zoom, that focus peaking still works as well. So with this movie crop mode, we're just using the center of the sensor. Uh, there's loads of birds in here at the moment. While we're on the topic of birds, I'd like to plug my other channel, Biodiversity Shorts. I do short nature videos, varying subjects, everything from microscopic life right up to large mammals, trees, and birds as well. So this is some clips from some hummingbird stuff that I'm currently working on. Um, I also have a spot on my website, which has got some more advanced photography tips and things like that, just a plain old website. Mostly my notes, I don't forget the techniques that I learn. Anyway, you can check out other videos there and uh, click on those links. Cheers. Now, while we're at it, I'll show you another way of helping to nail the focus is the magic zoom. So I'll just center that again because uh, the magic zoom doesn't 
doesn't play very nice when that's in full crop mode. And I'll just turn that. You have to be in the, there we go. So you can see it's got the, the two little bars that shows you where that focusing window is. And th this one's really great. This one I, I prefer to use if I'm going to be changing focus while I'm, while I'm filming. We've lost our bird now, so we'll just go back to another target. Alright, so I can quickly make sure that flower there is in focus like so. Another flower there. There we go. If you've got a good tripod and a lens, it's easy to focus. You know, that's another advantage with these old manual lenses is they have a really big focus throw, which um, your modern lenses with autofocus simply don't have. Otherwise, their little motors would be zipping away forever in there, unless you've got a really expensive one with an ultrasonic motor, which is sort of built into the ring mechanism. Um, so if you're just using these lenses for manual focus, they, that, well, that's all you are going to use them, but they do excel at manual focus because that's what they were designed for. They weren't designed with autofocus as a priority. Right, now I'll, just, I'll show you the same with the um, movie crop mode on. I've just got to stop recording to change that. Now there's some artifacts in that, but it still works quite well letting you nail that focus, even when you're using the crop mode. Um, go back to that flower if I can find it. There we go. Nailed it. So if I was say tracking a hummingbird or something and I could see it, I can quickly go up, get that flower. There we go, nailed it, let go. and and film that shot just like that. Of course, the, there are a few other settings that go with, sorry, a bit touchy there, with the magic zoom that you can, you can change the magnification to zoom in a bit more. You can change the size of that window as well. Um, and you can change the trigger mode. You can leave it always on or you can have it, um, so when you touch the focus ring, it comes on. That'll only work if you're using a, a camera that's got um, electrical contacts with the camera. And the size of it as well, position wherever you like as well. So highly configurable, really, really, really cool. All right, I'll, move, I'll turn that one off and I'll show you the next one. Where is it? Here it is. It's called a live view digic peaking. Now the CPU in this has some neat little features that Canon didn't implement and it looks like an early form of focus peaking which they programmed into the hardware. Like this is hard coded into the hardware so it happens really, really fast. But they didn't actually get it quite good enough for the consumer level. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Now if you, the EOS M3 has got the new Digic 6 and apparently they've nailed it but the focus peaking, peaking, uh, the focus peaking feature is already built into these cameras it's just not enabled in the in the Canon firmware so I'll just um, turn on the one I like to use is called slightly sharper and I hope you can see it it's it's very subtle but what happens is the area that's in focus gets sharpened slightly um, by, the, by the processor. So w what's saved in your video, it does, this doesn't get saved into video, this is just what goes to your live view screen. But um, it'll, it'll slightly sharpen all those areas in focus. And if we look at something like, go down here, you can see how it just shimmers a little bit, the, the part that's in focus. Maybe it'll come up a bit better on the camera there. And that's, 
I, I usually I usually leave this on all the time. There you go, you can really see it now when we're deep in the bush there. Actually, I'll open up the aperture a bit too, that'll help. There you go, you can really see the effect of that and it's super fast. But that's happening in, in, in pure, pure hardware that's doing that. So it's really, really fast. And I'll, I'll just show you, make sure I'm still recording. Yep, one, two. Now the digit peaking has got a couple of different um, methods. The edge image. Now you can really see the areas that are actually in focus here. I, I've, I've tried using this, it's quite tricky. If you're moving, you can't see anything, everything disappears. But if you're stationary, this can be quite a handy feature, particularly if you're stationary and you're looking over the top of the camera at your target, um, and, that, and then you're doing some sort of static scene like that. It shows up quite well, but if you move back and forth, it tends to stop there. Oh, apologies for all the fingerprints on, on front of this screen. It's a bit closer. You can see that as that camera comes into focus, it just pops out. Uh, there's also another one called Edge and Chroma. So it's that same edge, but it leaves a bit of color information in there. There we go. Very subtle. Um, oh, you can see that flower in there. Now, it depends on the situation, whether that might really be useful or not. Um, yeah, that, so they're the three digit peaking ones. I, I use a slightly sharper. Um, you, you tend to use that and, and almost forget about it in a way. And yeah, that's, that's definitely my favorite, um, one of my favorite methods. Now we can see if that digit peaking, I'm not sure if it works in the, when we're using a crop mode. It's really hard to actually tell. There we go, you can see it on those See those blades of grass just light up in the middle as I change the focus there. So it works in the crop mode as well. Of course, in the crop mode, you're really testing the performance of the lens because any uh, lack of sharpness in that lens will really show up when you're just using a very small portion of it. Already, you're probably using um, the lens cropped and you're cropping just a small percentage of the center of that lens. So using the crop factor in any sort of video work only really works with good quality glass anyway. These old 50 millimeter primes when used in the crop mode can be really good. Um, this is one of the more widely available ones. Very well designed and really quite sharp. Let's just show you a bit of the in-camera footage Footage there. I'll, I'll just, just do a bit of some practice shots. with such a crop factor you, you find yourself hunting around a bit sometimes there it is a lot of that will just come down to practice okay so that's a quick introduction to the various focusing aids that magic lantern provides really really cool so if you like this stuff go and give the developers a thank you on the forum um, that's always appreciated anyway thanks for watching uh, i've got a playlist for this and also i'd like to plug my other youtube channel which is called biodiversity shorts where i do a lot of nature filming uh, little mini nature documentaries better than discovery not as good as david attenborough but you know check it out 
If you like it, please share it. That's my professional channel. Cheers, I'll catch you next time. Tasha, what's that? What's that? Where's the squirrel? Go get him. Where's the squirrel? Where's the squirrel? Where's the squirrel?